God and everything. I want to ask that you share the live. I want to ask that you start your own watch party. I want to ask that you invite your friends and tell them to come on over. Invite your foes and tell them to come on. The prophetess Rosalind Atkinson and Pastor Gail Matthews are here live and in living color. So we want to welcome you guys to our platform that is called God and everything. And y'all know what I do it every week, but I don't do it by myself. Could if I would, but I can't, so I ain't. I do it with my girl, like do it with my friend, I do it with Rad and Live. I do it with my co-laborer and pastor in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, Pastor Gail Matthews. Hey girl, hey, how you doing? Hey girl, how you doing? How you doing? I am doing good. I am doing good, you know. Um, with so much going on in our world today in um, the United States of America, you know, um, you just have to um, keep your eyes like a flint on Jesus, on the bigger picture. You know, the bigger picture for me is the kingdom of God. The bigger picture for me is heaven. I'm trying to make heaven yes. my home. I want, a, I want as many people to go to heaven as possibly can. But let me tell you who I am most concerned with getting into those pearly gates is me, myself. Absolutely. And I, Absolutely. so I am keeping my eyes focused on the Lord, you know, paying attention and being alert and being wise with everything that's going around. But I'm not going to let that get me off course. I'm not going to let that no. get me out my hookup. I'm not going to be mad at God, <laughs> infuriated with him, why he didn't do this, why he should have did this, that, and the third. Because if me personally was going to be mad at God, that would have been all while I was in my, well, I did have a little upset with times with him. When I was in that horrible marriage for 24 years, what's going on in this world, child? Listen, this, this is going to affect us one way or another, but it's up to you how much you allow it to affect you, you know. And God takes yes. care of his own. And, if, and you know, if you're his, he is going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you. Absolutely. You might not have a building. You might not even have a car, but he'll make sure you got bus fare. You don't have bus fare, he's going to put where you need to go within walking distance. I'm yes. telling you, we, you know, we want all the luxuries and the lap on and all of that, but we just want God. I just want God to provide for me. I want him to give me what I need. Now, do I want my desires too? Of course I do. Who wouldn't? But I am yes. not hung up on whether or not I am. I, I ain't yeah. trying to command God yeah. and make him do yeah. not a doggone thing that ain't in his will for me. Now, I know as other people exactly. say his will, is, that's fine for you. I'm talking about for me. And so, yeah. you know, people are looking at what's going on in this world, Pastor, and um, their hearts are failing them for fear. You know, yes. the Bible says the men's hearts would. Um, they're looking at what's going on and they can't wrap their brain around exactly. uh, what's happening in the world and in the church. And so the world, I really, you know, I care about the world. I care about the sin. I care about the laws. But I know what's going on with that because the Bible told me so. Yes. It's this church that's yes, tripping me up. Church. Well, I shouldn't say tripping me up, tripping me out. That's a good now, word. I knew we would have some stuff going on, but in my lifetime, Pastor Gail, I really didn't think that that I would see such the, the divide. You know, our divide used to be yeah. whether you're baptized in Jesus' name or not. <laughs> I ain't even know that no more. Right. You're going to wear pants. Be, you, you know, <laughs> wear pants, one wear pants or not. Right. You know, a right. woman can preach or not. Uh, you know, all those types of things. Um, that Those are not even issues anymore. You know, the issue, the issue big issues are should uh, homosexuals be pastors, uh, you know, pastors and and we and that's 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 our next month whole we'll spend all next month talking about that, but I'm just gonna throw this in. You know, should uh, pastors get babies all over this congregation and around the country, should they still be the pastor? The that's the stuff that wow. we're dealing with right now. And 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 for me, why are we asking that question? In the obvious through yeah. the scripture, what God say about that. And so, you know, uh, Pastor Gail and I, we are going to talk um, next month about the church, um, the, the the churches in the book of Revelation and the church of uh, this 21st century, this new age, wow. this millennial, and just kind of do some comparisons. Hello? Yes. Because they yes. are there. Yes. Um, and so, but today I really want to talk about the aftermath of last Wednesday's terrorist riot uh, attempt to take over the Capitol mm -hmm. and to make lawmakers change what was already established 
by the people, for the people, we the people. And then prior to that, you know, uh, President Trump, he took, you know, all the legal avenues to explore whether or not mm. the um, election was rigged or fraudulent. He did everything that you're supposed to do in the court of law. And judges that he appointed, Republican judges that he appointed, threw the cases out because they had no merit. There was no credibility. No. Uh, you know, it was just, you know, people can say anything, but it has to be proven. You know, exactly. what I'm saying? You, you, you got to prove it. But y'all go by what people say. That's the problem. Y'all keep going by what people say and not by what people do and what people can prove. And so all those um, cases were thrown out and witness after witness was erroneous and just found out to be either cuckoo or just straight out liars or they retracted right. what they said. Right. And so since all of that didn't work through the legal means, now he incites violence by telling his holding the rally and telling his people, he'd been telling them all the time to meet him in Washington uh, on a day that they're supposed to count the electoral uh, votes. And then he holds a rally and tell them to go fight. And so uh, now people say he mean go fight, literally. Just stop. That's what they saying. They saying that. See, see, that's why words have power and every word has a meaning. So fight means to literally go and duke it out. Go and fight. Go put for some effort. Go and resist. That's what it's saying. Go and protect and defend by yes. any means necessary. When you are a leader of the free world, you have to watch your words carefully. And so he has not from day one, you know, even when before when he was running. So I didn't think that he would, you know, because uh, he should. I didn't think he would. And he didn't. So these people, they march to the Capitol and they break in. And, you know, as a result, Five people have lost their lives because of it, and one one a uh, police officer. Um, they had uh, they built a, a, a you know a thing that hang with a noose on it, uh, and they were Gallo. they, they mm -hmm. were coming after uh, uh, Vice President Pence because uh, uh, President Trump said that he was not a true patriarch because he didn't overthrow the will of the people. And so um, as a result, um, people have been um, found out because first of all, the Capitol got cameras everywhere. And then these people, because Pastor Gil, they think that they actually own America. Yes. <laughs> when you actually yes. stole America, but you think you own what you stole, so you go yeah. up in there and you you create all kind of um, felonies and all kind of chaos. And mm -hmm. then when you are arrested at uh, airports and when you're fired from your job and when the police show up on your door, then you have a fit talking about you sorry, you didn't mean to do it. Yeah, what did you think was going to happen? But I saw a very interesting post. Somebody said that they should have paid attention to their uh, forefathers because their forefathers did the same thing they did, but they did it with hoods on. So nobody would know who they were. But because you think that you're you're so privileged that you think that I could just walk up in this Capitol building and I could push past the guards. God I can steal, I can go to uh senators offices, I could take selfies, I can uh, you know, a urinate and defecate all throughout this building and nobody is going to do anything to me. Unfortunately, uh, they had this uh, bank manager. I can't remember what state he was from, um, but he was there and they had his picture and all, th all of that. And in, instead of facing the music, if you will, he took his life today or yesterday. Um, 
And so it's fathers and sons. And, you know, it's not all hillbillies. Because as they were saying, you know, it's the poor white people wasn't all. We had some folk that he was a manager. We get police officers and all kinds of people. With right. And nurses and people that have careers that also joined in in this terrorist attempt. And I keep saying terrorist because it was. Yeah. In this terrorist attempt to overthrow the government. And so now we hear that. Um, they're supposed to march on every capital in these here United States and, you know, bring their guns and all of this and that. And so I want to um, ask all of you that believe in prayer, all of you that know that prayer works, all of my intercessors, all of my prophets, I want y'all to begin yes. to yes. pray against yes. those attacks because I don't want it to come even though I am not in Columbus, I don't want it to come anywhere near Columbus. I don't want it to come anywhere near Ohio, the state that I am in. I don't want to come anywhere near Georgia or, or Alabama or Kentucky or whatever, Washington, wherever, wherever. I don't want it to come anywhere near that. Violence mm -hmm. is never good. And, and, and I reposted a post that got shared, I don't know how many times. And that was, we as Black people as people of color we marched in protest against police brutality and injustice and inequalities they marched mm -hmm. in protest against an election we are not the same this is not the same, not the same. right it absolutely right. is not you right. mad because your president or the person you wanted to get in office did not so you marched against that we mm -hmm. marched because you were killing innocent black men in the street unarmed while they running from you, while they sitting, while they walking, while girl in her bed, while uh, Jean Claude is, is in his house. You know, so we walk and marching for that. Y'all marching because the vote count did come in your favor. Mm. And, you know, Pastor Gail, I was, um, I listened to and I post about uh, uh, Prophet Kim Clement uh, God rest his soul. And I, I, I liked Kim. Uh, um, I used to really, really like him. Um, when he initially came on the scene, I heard his testimony and he, um, was from South Africa and, uh, I can't ask this. Mm -hmm. And he was from South Africa and, um, um, he said that the Lord sent him to America to prophesy to her. And, um, you know, I, I watched him and I listened to him and him teach the word and, and, and watch him give uh, prophetic words to people and everything. Um, and, um, wait, I need to send this. And, I watched him give prophetic words to every to people and everything, and so I, I liked him initially. Then I watched mm -hmm. his prophecies change, and I want to say to those of you that are up and coming prophets and those of you that are prophetic in nature and you know claim the office of a prophet or prophesy whatever it is that you claim that before you open your mouth, take it through some filters in your own spirit and in your own heart to make sure that you're not prophesying out of your biases. Yes. And out of your prejudices. Um, because I watch Kim's prophecy turn to bias-based prophecies. I remember, and, 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 and I can't find it. I remember him prophesying that um, Obama wouldn't win. Um, and I haven't been able to find it. I, I watched him say that. I, 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 I was watching the, the, the um, TVN, okay? Um, and then when he won, I watched it change in terms of being for him and what God was going to mm. do and all of that. But I also, um, he also said that um, he was not going to be a two-term uh, president. I, I saw all that too. 
And so, um, okay, I will. And so, um, I'm like, okay, what did happen? What, what, you know, and I know in South Africa, you know, it was, it was white people rule. So I know you were over there with all of that and y'all were in charge and, you know, black people just got free in South Africa yesterday. And mm -hmm. then you come over here to the United States and you pick up that same, that same spirit of entitlement and that everything that God does is according to y'all and for white people. God help us all. So anyway, I made sure I went and I looked at the um, prophecy that he gave about Trump. And he said, you know, that Trump was going to win and that Trump was going to be a two-term president and that they would say impeach, impeach, but it would be no. And so I posted, I quoted him and uh, I said his name and everything. And I said, he said mm -hmm. impeach, impeach, but that it would be no. And I said impeach two times. He's the only president in the United States of America, since the beginning of folks becoming president, that have been impeached two times. Now, yes. here's the deal. People need to take a civics class and they need to take American government and then what will help them too is world history and black history. I promise you it'll help you. And because I love true stories, all of those things fascinated me when I was in school because I like true stories. Mm -hmm. so I wanted to know mm -hmm. the truth. And so to be impeached means that we have an agreement and we have dr driven up or, or, or written up paperwork to say we're going to take you to trial to see if we're going to uh, uh, get you out of office. It doesn't mean that you get out of office because you've been impeached. It means that we have enough votes to draw up the paperwork to say we're going to have a trial in the Senate to see whether or not you're going to stay the president or you're not, okay? So um, he's been impeached two times. And so that prophecy, and, and, and so somebody um, that is a avid Trump supporter, um, they put on their page today, of course they didn't say nothing to me, they put on their page today that, uh, Folks dragging Kim commit through the through the grave. No. And this is what I told my sister. I said, if I say something that don't come to pass and I'm no longer here, say it. Say it. Because if I tell you God said something that don't happen, right. you have right. every right to question that, to say something about that, to ask me about that, to uh, inquire about that. You have every single right. Because I should keep my mouth shut if God is not saying something, and so should you. Yes. And so yes. people get offended when folks say, wait a minute, did you say and it didn't happen? Did you? Did? I'm not going to be offended. I missed it. Because you know what it's called? It's called humanity. Absolutely. It's called we are human beings. And, and, and there's not a human being on the planet that has not missed God. I'm talking about, I don't care, the best prophet that can see through steel and see through brick. Yes. They have missed God. And I personally believe that he makes it so, so that you won't get like you the stuff and you float no air and all of that. That's why he gave Paul a thorn in his flesh so exactly. that he wouldn't start thinking that he was more highly than he all, all the things. But it's still, these people still think it anyway and they don't even... Listen, they be prophesying and they get two out of 10, right? And they still think they the bomb.com. The bomb How? Because you have convinced people that whatever you say, God is saying. And y'all need to stop following what people are saying and follow what this Bible is saying. It is 66 books in here. And don't nobody know none of them. But you know what Prophet Jones said and you know what Prophet Claire prophesied. And, and they just saying whatever a lot of times. And it's not happening and it's not coming to pass. And then they put it back on you, on them and say, this is why and all of that. Listen, God ain't listening. Just like uh, when Trump became president and, and folks was prophesying that Hillary was going to become president. People were saying, oh, Hillary didn't become president because the evangelicals prayed and God listened to them. No, you miss God. Just like mm -hmm. Trump didn't become president because 
oh, Trump, the only reason why Trump didn't get in office is because uh, the Christians, the, 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 it's not evangelical and Baptist and blah, blah, blah. They pray. No, it is the will of God. And you missed it. You were prophesied out of your own bias. You were prophesied yes. out of your own prejudice. Simple as that. Yes. And then if you don't know and somebody asks you, you don't know, say you don't know. What's right. wrong? Well, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't have a clue. If you get the news, tell me. I said right. in the New York Minute, because I'm not sitting over here trying to act like I know everything God is doing, because I know I don't. I and, know. I'll, and let me tell you what I know more than that. I know you don't need it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you're acting like you do. Exactly. Now, Pastor Gail brought something up to my attention. The Lord said to me for 2021 is that out of the mouths of two to three witnesses, let every word be established. Don't you go flying and running and jumping and flipping and, and buying and selling and, and marrying people and starting ministries and, and, and starting business. Oh, because once somebody, you got want somebody's property from somebody. You bet I don't care who it is. You bet I do it out of the mouths of two to three witnesses. I'm a three witness girl. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Yeah. I'm a three. Three is a yeah. charm for me. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Three days Jesus rose from the dead. I'm so right. serious. I'm a three right. witness girl. When it is something for me to do that is major, I wait on witnesses. It ain't people that I done told to ask what their opinion is. Yes. No, 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 no. Because you know, we do that. We tell the story and then we want to know what, 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 what is God saying? So they going to tell you what God is saying based on what you done told them. That God is exactly. saying to you. That ain't how the two to three witnesses go, y'all. Right. It is the Lord right. has spoke something to me. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm looking for my witness. And that could be through somebody's preach message. That could be through a phone conversation. That can be through you overhearing something. That can be through a secular means. Y'all don't, y'all don't even yes. understand that. It yes. can be. Yes. It could be through a thus said the Lord. But God will bring confirmation to you. You don't have to go look for confirmation. He will bring it to you. Okay? Amen. So don't do anything without a witness. I don't care what it is. Don't do Don't you better house. God can tell you you're going to get your house. But don't you better unless you got a witness that this is what you're supposed to be doing. And this is the house that you're supposed to buy. I don't care what they say. Oh, I see. I see you're supposed to be living in. Uh -uh. I had somebody call me. And I was getting ready to buy my second house. And they said, a girlfriend of mine, she said, Rob, she said, um, we've been friends for years. She said, God told me he'll give you a house in Bedford. And I said, okay. Because I was looking in Bedford. And I told him, I said, I'm mm -hmm. looking in Bedford. But I'm also mm -hmm. looking at Bedford Heights. I'm looking at Garfield. I was looking at Beachwood. And I was looking at Cleveland Heights. I said, those are the places that I'm looking. Well, sure enough, God gave me a house in Bedford. But I wasn't going on no one witness. Right. Yeah, did y'all hear them other five suburbs I was looking at? Right. Because I was sitting, getting ready to sit up here and let you be my, my only voice. Right. And just the so voice. happened, the house that I walked in and knew was mine was in Bedford. So she was mm -hmm. my confirmation. She, mm -hmm. Yes, she was. But that ain't what I went and only looked at houses in Bethlehem. Because I didn't know, actually know where God was going to give me a house. I just knew he was going to give me one and I knew it was time to go look. And so when I walked into one in Bethlehem and, 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 and got the confirmation that this is it, then hey, then it was and it all worked out together. Ain't that nice? Well, ain't my husband and I, we were looking to buy this time we were looking everywhere, all over. We was looking. I'm not gonna tell y'all what city I live in, but we were looking everywhere. And I heard this city calling me. Mm -hmm. And I told my husband, I hear blankety blank calling me. And he was like, okay. But we still was looking everywhere. But what happened? We walked in the house that's ours in the city that I heard calling me. That was the confirmation. Y'all y'all keep running around like chicken with your head cut off doing whatever these people telling you to do. And then when it don't happen, then you frustrated with God. No, you need to be frustrated with yourself for believing these lying wonders, believing these false prophets, believing these people will have truths and whole lies. Because that's what it boils down to. Have truths. Yeah. 
and whole lives. And this is the thing, Pastor Gail, I told my sister today, I said, you know why Trump is so messed up? It's because he was listening to the false prophets telling him that he's supposed to be president for two terms. That's it. That's how that's he, it, that's why it. he met, listen. That's it. He wanted to be president. They assured him that he was God's man. They assured him, Paula White assured him that he was the man of God. These white evangelicals, and it's a list of them, assured him a uh, 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 Roth, seeing Roth. I hear, I know what I hear the Lord saying. He's saying that that, that President Trump will be a two-term president. He is, he is Cyrus. They is posting all this stuff and saying all this stuff. They pumped that man up with them lies. Because yes. they were prophesying out of their own imagination and out of their biases. So you were wrong as two left shoes. So you are responsible for this man's foolish behavior as well. You're exactly. responsible for that. You got a hand in that. Because you was lying to the man. And because and you wanted you wanted your own will. You wanted your own privilege wow. to prevail. You did. That's it. And so that's, he, that's why he is sitting up here. He is wiped out. This man is wiped all the way out because all of these false prophets that claim to know the Lord and holding the Bible and he got Jimmy Swagger's Bible and y'all praying and y'all saying who he is and the Lord bless you and y'all praying. Y'all done told this man that God's will for him was to be a two-term president, that God's will for him was to be the man of the hour when he was God's man and blah, blah, blah. And he ate all that up and sucked all that up. And now he's sitting over there between crazy and sane. Because of you. Because of you. Because of you lying to him yeah. and wouldn't bring him into accountability. Because you didn't want to lose your position. Yes. You didn't want to lose your favor. You didn't want to lose your paycheck. So you wrong and you will give you. I'm talking to you. You don't want to talk to y'all put them in your tag them. Y'all tag all of them. For, for the shit is. I'm talking to you. You will give a confidence because you part of that man's uh instability. Yes. You are part of that. You 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 have yes. cultivate yes. that. You are part of that man's mental capacity right now. Yes. You know, he because he just knew it. It was a sure end. It was, listen, here, it was honey. It was like somebody gave you the number to the power ball, baby. The, you had the you had the people that's going to pull the power ball. Y'all don't act like y'all don't know what the power ball is in the mega me. Don't act like y'all don't know that. that. They didn't gave you the numbers to it. These are the numbers that's going to fall and you finna win mm -hmm. this $10 million. Mm -hmm. That's how sure he was. Mm -hmm. And came right yes. into a lot. And then here's the other thing, Gail. Everything about him is being dismantled. But I have said Everything. on this platform and on others Everything. that God, that God was going to bring Trump down. And I just said it. And I said, it ain't, this ain't got nothing yes. to do with nobody else's hands. A man hand ain't going to yes. touch him. It is all God. Mm -hmm. You know what? Y'all want to know how yeah. I know? Because I was running around my house, minding my own business, walking around it, running around it, cleaning or something that I was doing. And the Holy Spirit said, Asa. I said, Asa. Yeah. Asa. Asa, start thinking. King Asa, King Asa, King Asa. King Asa was a wicked king, wouldn't obey God. Sat in a chair, fell out the chair and broke his neck. That was all God. How you fall out of chair and break your whole neck? Hello? I said, God. And that's when I started coming over. I said, God is going to take down that hat look himself. He don't need nobody. Ain't nobody go, ain't nobody go uh, assassinate him. That ain't going to happen. It is going to be all God. And we are watching it unfold. But y'all don't want to hear this prophet. Y'all want to hear them other ones that's going to tell you, you'll get a house and you'll get a car and you'll get some land and, 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 and cash at me because I got a word for you and your mom and your cousin and, and everybody. Oh, y'all, but, 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 but what I've been saying been happening mm, mm, and I ain't got mm. a cash app yet. All right, Pastor Gail. Listen, I want to say some things and I'm, I know you're going to capitalize on this. Uh, some things that just really came clear to me yesterday. And I'm a fi in finality, Arise, I want to share with you this dream. I'm not a dreamer, but this mm -hmm. is a simplistic dream. But I know now uh, why it came to be. Um, it, it is very dangerous uh, for these false prophets. First of all, they are setting the stage for the Antichrist. They are setting the stage for the Antichrist. The false Christ 
and the one who will stand against Christ. Because okay. the things that has been said by this political leader have been mild against Christ, have been uh, very presumptuous against Christ. But there will come one who will speak blatantly against him and will steal or attempt to steal his glory and be part of the great deception that is to come. False prophets are partners with the Antichrist. The other thing yeah. that I want to say is that false prophets do not do good with silence because they are only engage your mouth with his voice. False prophets do not do good with silence and false prophets are always going to lean toward presumption when they do not hear from God. When they don't hear from God, they're going to lead toward presumption. Mm -hmm. I look, when I looked at uh, a passage scripture, looked at John 14, when he tells us, don't believe every spirit speaking through a self-proclaimed prophet. Come and on he here. Said, you got to test the spirits, whether they are from God. And the test is, like you said, God backs up his word. He said, there's three to bear record in heaven. The water, he said, the spirit and the word. And, the word. and so if there's no, there's no uh, agreement, if there's no uh, corresponding word, if there's no uh, validation, don't, he said, because false prophets and teachers, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. it's some on your side, prophetess, it's yes. some on my side, that are, have gone out into the world. Yeah. Then I, I looked at, and then in, in uh, Revelation 16, it said, I saw three loathsome spirits like frogs leaping from the mouth of the dragon, Satan, the, and the mouth of the beast, Antichrist or dictator, and, and from the mouth of the false prophet. Yes. There's a mimicry. There's always a mimicry in the prophet, in the false prophetic to that which is in the kingdom and which God has established. Yes. So you see them together. They doing TV shows together. They, they, they coming together and saying what well, this one and that one said. But the hope that we have is that my hope is in Revelation 19 when it said, and the beast, the Antichrist oh, yes. was seen and overpowered. And with him, the false prophet. Now listen why it's so dangerous for the false prophet to keep speaking because I told you you're setting the stage for the Antichrist because they're partners. He said the false prophet who in his presence, the Antichrist presence, had performed amazing signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Some, listen. People love people of with all this flash and dash and all of this, that these lies and stuff. And it said those two were hurled alive hmm, into the lake thing. of fire, which blazes yes. with burnt stones. My now God. let me share with you this 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 dream. I'm not a dreamer, but there are times when I wake up and God says that had meaning. I dreamed a few weeks ago that I was in a small place, a tight place, and it was a place where like I was sleeping maybe in a camp or a cabin or whatever. But mm -hmm. it was a camp or cabin that uh, Trump had some authority or he owned. Now, first of all, I, I should have known that was some crazy. But listen, <laughs> and in next to my bed, next to where I was, was a vat, was like a, a drum. And in it was baby alligators. Ooh. And I was looking at them. They was, they was cute. They were swimming around and everything. They had no menacing power about them. Right? Mm -hmm. They were just little, little baby alligators. So I wasn't really that terrified. Okay. I had a dream again today. And I was in that same place. And those alligators had took on all kind of, of colors. Some had spots. Some had orange color in them. Some had other, but they were all alligators and they were bigger now. Mm. And they were so big that they began to get out of where they were had been swimming around, where mm. they had been contained because they didn't have enough. They weren't big enough to get out. 
Mm-hmm. Now they were mm-hmm. bigger. Matter of fact, one had got out and could not be found. So the Holy Spirit charges me with why would an alligator get out and all of this? Because what are they eating? And I looked mm-hmm. up the alligator eating habits. Mm-hmm. This is the false prophet. This, this is the spirit is in the earth. Alligators are opportunist, opportunistic feeders. We're still talking about false prophets. Mm-hmm. They are opportunistic feeders. Their diets include prey species that are abundant and easily accessible. My juvenile alligators eat primarily insects, little amphibians, small fish, and little other invertebrates. But listen to this. Now we got to start talking to our false prophets on this national level and our folks calling out angels and spirits from Africa and all this. Adult <laughs> alligators, these false prophets that have advanced to a larger rank. Mm-hmm. Adult alligators eat rough fish, snakes, turtles, small mammals, and birds. But mm-hmm. at any point, at any, the thing is, they're dangerous. Their growth I hear you, Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. is dangerous. And that's why we have to, we talk against it, we preach against it, we stand against it, we raise a standard in ourselves and an ethic for the word of God against it. Because if it was not for the constraint of the Holy Ghost, as the saying goes, there but for the grace of God go I. Because we can get up and start teaching on prosperity. We can teach, we got to be careful with a lot of things. We got sister girls that's teaching on beauty. Don't let the beauty, don't let the marketing, don't let the monetizing ever eclipse the gospel. Because then we start praying on people. We start eating from them and we're not feeding them. That's the thing about the alligator. He's eating from the people. He's not feeding them. I'm good. That's good. That's that 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 right there was all the way God. That is so good. That is mm. that was excellent. And 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 mm. we do. You know, God wants us to uh be in good health. This the Bible says, even yes. as He yes. wants us, even as our soul prosper. He wants us to be in good health, even as our soul prosper. He wants us to have abundance. He wants us to live, you yes. know, in in open heaven. He wants us to you know, have some desires of our heart. He wants us to, you know, have more than enough. He wants us to do all of that. But none of that can take the place of of the kingdom of God. Uh, And you, 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 it's so many things that you can monetize. And see, I'm all for monetizing, especially when you monetize towards the world. I'm so poor. Listen, this this thousand dollars for you, because see, I understand that this thousand dollars is going to fund the kingdom. I get it. But when it comes to the body of Christ, whether it is my ministry gift or it's a gift or talent that God has given me, I have to be careful if I am using it for the body of Christ or towards the body of Christ. Um, And so what has happened in the church is that we've seen so many pastors Get rich off of the church. You ain't had a job in 17 years. Yes. But you got a Mercedes and you got a five bedroom house. You ain't work nowhere. Now, I'm not saying that you ain't, the Bible declares that if you eat, if you are fed off of my spiritual things, I'm supposed to get your natural things. I'm not saying that. He that he that's in the word and all of that, he's worthy of double, double honor. I'm not saying none of that because we supposed to give to the men and women of God. But I'm saying it's the difference between give to the men and women of God and them milking you. It is a difference, okay? And then you acting as though these people better give it to you. You sitting up here. You they 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 in one night they done raised two hundred fifty thousand dollars just for you just for you because you the head of this specific entity and so all the little people that under you they brought you eighteen thousand to twenty two thousand and I'm gonna talk about my experience back in the day what I saw with my own eyes that I witnessed I'm gonna talk about that when we get there next next month and okay you turn around. And when they check the books, you steal it. How 
you getting two hundred and fifty thousand dollars as a gift and you still stealing money that's supposed to be assigned oh and designed for other parts of the ministry to grow and to help and all of that? But you you get more of that enough, but now you you, you still got your hand in the pot because you think all of it's yours. I just had to tell somebody that told me about uh, a, a a ministry that that they came up, and we're gonna talk about that next month. And that the books were not right, and and that the the, the leader could have been stealing. So they said to me, "Well, well, wasn't it his ministry?" I said, "Let let let be clear. It's called five hundred one c three. It was his ministry, absolutely." I said, "But he did not invent something that people are purchasing. He is not the owner of Amazon." He gets his right. he gets his income from donations. So therefore, every single solitary nickel or dime has to be present and accounted for. So it ain't your hmm. you ain't work for this. You ain't you ain't you ain't create the cup and the salsa and people buying them. No, you are yes. subject to rules and regulations. Yes. But because these people think this is mine, and they fail to realize that one day you're going to have to stand before the all-knowing all powerful God and what you gonna say then so we we can never you know or I should say we should never take it to that extreme where we're doing ministry and God is blessing the ministry and we are benefiting from the ministry but then we get greedy and now we think that you know you they, they was giving you fifty dollars and fifty dollars was enough and everything. But now you done looked over around the corner and you see they've given them a hundred. Now you think you're supposed to have a twenty hundred twenty five. So now you just start stealing seventy five. Not go get a job. See y'all don't want to talk to me because see Paul he he worked the gospel, he prayed, he prophesied, he mm. wrote, he did everything. But he also made tents. He yes. kept a job. But y'all don't want yes. y'all don't want to have that conversation. Well, well, you listen, you, you, don't, you don't want to have that conversation. You just eating from the people, eating from the people, eat from the people, and then you have nothing to give back. Y'all don't have no kind of ministry. Y'all have no kind of, can't pick up the elderly and then nothing. It's, in this pandemic, y'all ain't here $25 to get to a, to a mother. You ain't got but one mother in the church. You can buy her some groceries and pay her light bill. No, because you're too busy trying to figure out how you go get yours paid. You are not a shepherd. You are a hireling. Let's call it yes. what it is. We're going to stop calling people pastors. We're going to call them what they, is, what they are. You are a hireling. You've been hired for a position, for a job. And because of that, you'll do anything you want to do. And that's fine because you got to give it. But we're not going to call you pastor. We're not going to call you shepherd because that's what a pastor is. And so, Pastor Gail, we had these Prophet says praying and not P-R-A-Y, but P-R-E-Y on the people of God. Right. And, and, and they couldn't get it off if they did not have an audience. You got to have an audience to get that kind of behavior off. You got to have somebody that, that has a need and, and, and eating from it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 and got to have it and lusting after it. Then you create an environment for the false, because you just got to have that as opposed to getting in your Bible for yourself and getting that. And so we we have seen, especially over the last 10 years, in particular over the last four years with this, with this president, all of these people prophesied out of their mind, out of their imagination, out of their biases and out of their prejudice, and we have created, or I'm sure, I ain't gonna say we, I'm not gonna put me in that. They have created a monster. Yeah. They have created a monster. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's very, very sad. And I, I was thinking this. The other day, I was like, now, in this life, the Lord promised us three score and 10, that's 70 years, right? Mm -hmm. And Joe wrote, man born of a woman, days is few, few and they full of trouble, oh, okay? Right. And so your 70 years, you trying to get, and say at 68, no, let, let me give you 60. 60, you get it. You, 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 you tap into something and you just got bountiful. Get all this stuff coming your way. You got streams of income. You can do what you want to do. You can go wherever you want to go. You can buy whatever you want to buy. 
But then it's day 70, right? Your 70th birthday. And God said, okay, because he can. This is the end of this. And you have not laid up any treasure in heaven. But you had stuff here. See, we, we walked past, uh, I want to say it's the 16th chapter of St. Luke, when Jesus is, you know, he always gave parables. But when he got ready to talk about uh, the rich man of Lazarus, the Bible says, and Jesus said. So they, because they want to make the rich man of Lazarus, they want to make that a parable. A parable. They want to they they make true. that a true story. Right. But there was a man named Lazarus, and we know him. And there was mm -hmm. a man named Abraham. And we know him. They make that they ain't no made up figures. Mm -hmm. That ain't Sharonka Rish and Shiraka Rosh. Them is people mm -hmm. we know, according to the scripture, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he says that Lazarus was a beggar. And he went to the rich man and he was begging for something to eat. And the rich man would not give him anything to eat. And not only was he a beggar, but he was sickly because he had sores and the dogs licked yes. sores. Yes. So you walk past this man and you get all this abundance. And you walk My past God. this man that's hungry and sickly yes. and you do nothing because that ain't your problem. He need to pull his own stuff up from his own uh, bootstraps. He, he need to work. He should have listened to his mama. He should have went to school. He should have graduated. He shouldn't have he got turned out on drugs. She should have she shouldn't have got turned out on drugs. You walk past people that need your assistance and need your help. And it's right in your power to do it. Yeah. And the Bible says that Lazarus died. And also says mm -hmm. that he was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Yeah. yeah. Into paradise, into safety, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into calm, cool, and collective. Then it says that the rich man died also and he was buried. It don't say he was carried nowhere. It says he was buried. And then it says in hell. In hell he lifted up. In hell. Yes. The rich man lifts his eyes and he notices uh, Lazarus afar off. And then he started talking. Oh, now you want to talk to now you want to talk to Lazarus. Now, now, now you got a conversation for him. Now, when he was begging right, you right. for bread and help, you ain't had no holler for him. But now you in hell and you are being tormented and you can see that he is not. Now, mm -hmm. you got holler for him. You got time for him. Mm -hmm. He says, can uh, Lazarus take the tip of his finger and dip it in some water, put it on my tongue because I am tormented in these flames. Y'all better act like hell real. <laughs> See, well, nobody preach hell no more. Preach. Hell is a state, okay? It's a state that is tormenting. It's a state of torment. It's a state Absolutely. of tremendous heat. Absolutely. Hello. It is a state of consciousness that you know what's going on. It ain't like you yes. just sleep. Oh, I just sleep. Yes. And I don't know what's... No. Yes. He knew what... He knew Lazarus. <laughs> He knew he was hot. He knew he needed some water. So he had some sisters at work. They didn't die with him. Right. So that tells me that that body ain't nothing but a shell. Because this real right. man could still taste, see, smell, talk, and hear. Hello. Looks and says, can he tip, take his finger and dip it in the water and put it on my tongue? Because I am tormenting his flame. Yes. And Abraham said, uh, you know what? In your lifetime, you hit everything. You go where you want to go. You can drive what you want to drive. You can wear what you want to wear. You can buy what you want to buy. And Lazarus had nothing. Yes. And in addition to that, you was walking past the man and you saw he had nothing and you had the means in which to help him and you refused to because he should pull his own stuff up by his own bootstraps. Okay. And he said, no, I ain't going to be able to do that. He said, because it's a great gulf fixed between the two of y'all. And those people that are here, they can't go there. And those people that are there, that want to come here, they can't come. Isn't it amazing that Lazarus never said a word? Did he even hear the conversation? Ha, that's a good one. That's Did he even one. hear? Was he able to hear the yes, conversation? Yes, yes. 
My God. He was talking about him. He was in a room, but he never responded. Isn't that something? So he said, well, Father Abraham, he said, this place is so terrible. He said, I've got five brothers at home. He yes. said, can somebody please go and tell my five brothers okay. not to come to this place yes. of torments? Yes. Don't come here. Whatever you do, do the right thing and don't come here. Yeah. Yeah. He says, nah, they have the prophets and they have the scriptures. He said, if they won't hear them, y'all won't hear me. Y'all won't hear the prophets. Y'all won't hear the authentic voices that God has put in yes. the earth. Y'all won't hear the word. Yes. He said, suddenly they won't hear somebody raised from the dead who Jesus did and preached for 40 days before he was caught up in the heaven. Mm -hmm. And they still didn't hear. And see, wow. we have to understand that this life is not our home. This is not our final resting place. Yes. And we need to start building treasures in the heavenly place. How do yes. you do that? By yes. doing the word of God, God, by giving alms to the poor, by helping yes. and working your gifts. If you on this planet and you breathing out, in and out, and your life is not helping somebody else's life, you are just existing. You are not living. If you are selfish and self-motivated and you got means and, which, and information, you got information. Let's just go with the information. You got yes. information that can help somebody's ministry do better. You have information yes. that can help somebody's business be better. And you won't share the information because you, you think they're going to get more than you or going to be better than you or people going to like them more than you. It's everything, y'all. Wow. It's everything, you know. Get, I know this is this is real, real uh, 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 minimal. People won't even tell you where a good sale is. Yeah. They won't even tell you yeah. where good sale is. Yeah, you yeah. have women that won't even. You say, "Oh, girl, that perfume smells so good. What you got on? Uh, uh, ooh, ah, uh, 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 uh. You know what you sprayed on you? Right, right." Right. You won't even let your sister know what the perfume is. Right. Like y'all gonna walk out smelling the same. Or exactly. if she is going to even buy it. Or if she can afford to buy. Or if she want to buy. She just she just want to know the name of it. If That's she all. even will remember it. That's it. That's it. You know how to do something in ministry that can make somebody else's ministry flourish and do better and reach more and help more. And you know what you got the key to it. And you will not even give them the information. You are dead wrong because you ain't building no treasure in heaven, babe. Because you think Absolutely. this is all there is Absolutely. in the name of the Lord. You think this yes. is all there is. Yes. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? You know somebody off. You know, let's go here. I'm going to go deeper. Come on, y'all. We'll go deeper. Say go deeper, prophetess. We're going to go deeper. You know go somebody deeper. off. You know that that pastor been molesting boys for 25 years. And yet yes. you keep letting people go there and you don't say nothing. Oh, God, speak. You don't speak. say nothing. You know that pastor is a pimp in the pulpit. He done screwed everybody. Yes. In the he got babies all around the world. And you don't say nothing about it. As soon as somebody say something about it, then you you looking like, why they talk about my pastor? They tell me, you know his business. We don't talk about that post last week that I had to get a whole laundry list of people. I had to get scared because we're not going to let act like this. A hey, uh uh. We are not. It's a whole lot of stuff I let pass yeah. and let go because it ain't my business. But when it is mad, I'm going for the word because we're not going to just put this stuff out here. Absolutely. And do we really Absolutely. think that the Lord is going to say, well done? Do we really think that? Do we believe that? We have Lord this standard not so at all. Ill. Not at we all. Have Lord is so like like God don't even have a standard at all. Like just get to be by any means necessary. You know the, the, the thing of a night is get all you can, can all you get, and then sit on the can. Not for the body of Christ. Not yes. for the believer. Not for yes. us. And we acting just like the world. And really, at the end of the day, are no different than the world. Everything no is a charge, and then it's a surcharge. Now I listen. I I, I will uh, for uh, you. You the man. You the came up. God and gave you, and you know how to make lipstick. And I like lipstick. And I might spend twenty dollars on on some lipstick. 
but you want 35 mm -hmm. for yours. Girl, I'm not giving you 35 dollars for a lipstick. I'll buy some Crayola crayons first. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? You because you 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 greedy. You don't even make it reasonable. You don't even make it reasonable. You got a conference. Oh my God. You have a a a a, a a teacher or whatever, and it's That's out good. of the norm for people to be able to come. They can't come. They got thousands of dollars to attend your stuff, but you got the information for them. You're not out here to the world. You present your case to the church. Now, if you was out there in corporate America, you told them five hundred dollars. You would tell them five thousand. I'm talking about what you're supposed to tell the church, the body of believers. Yes. Yes. But they and yes. they can't afford it. And then you say they, they they can afford anything else they want. They it, we ain't talking about they can afford with anything else they want. We're telling you if you got something that God wants you to share and help people, it needs to be affordable. Yes. Are you trying to get exactly. people help or not? Oh, you exactly. trying to get your, your your 18th pair of red bottoms? What is it? Oh, your or your Mercedes or your Amati suit? We gotta stop the foolishness. But it we keep true. saying it. We keep saying it. We keep saying it. And then we see these preachers. I watched this little boy, and I said, "Little boy, uh, uh, yes. Holmes. What's his name? His name? Yeah, Holmes. Joshua. 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 He sat on. Yes. And he had five minutes, and I'm gonna say this. He sat there, and I watched him for about a minute and a half because I can't stomach mm. that. But he sat right. on there, and all this gold. I know that gold chain on his neck had to be about five, six, seven thousand dollars as thick as he would. He told them people. That he is living the gospel. That he don't mind people calling him a prosperity preacher. Now he about 12. <laughs> you ain't even been around long enough to know nothing. Let's that's, that's just start. Right. That. And that, you know, he don't mind nobody calling him a prosperity preacher because he is living proof that the gospel works. Jesus did not die so you can be rich. I'm going to say that again for the people in the back. Jesus did not shed his blood on Calvary. Exactly. So you can be rich. Absolutely. Absolutely. He didn't do it. He shed his blood on Calvary so that you can be born mm -hmm. again. My God, my God, I thank you. So you can be free of death, hell, and the grave. Yes. So that you can know him in this life by way of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that you can reside with him mm -hmm. throughout eternity. That's why he gave his blood so your sins could be washed, so he can remember yes. them no more. He didn't yes. give it so you can live in a 10 room mansion. He didn't give it so you can drive a Bentley. He didn't give it so you can have money coming out of everywhere. That is not why Jesus died on Calvary, Absolutely. period, dot. And that's for the prosperity preacher and everybody in between. That ain't why Jesus died. Do yes. people get that, you know, as yeah. a result of some? Absolutely. But that is not the reason why Jesus died on Calvary. So you can mm -hmm. have some money. Y'all better stop that. Stop it. People got money mm -hmm. and they go to hell. People got money and they're and they're dying with the yes. money in their hands in the bank. They got plenty yes. money and can't be cured of cancer. Plenty money absolutely. can't be cured of AIDS. Plenty money and get in a plane accident. Plenty money. Yes. Kobe had plenty money and dead. Almost a billionaire the man was. They said the wife is a billionaire. Wow. Wow. And he is dead. We better stop and we better yeah. stop it today. Thank y'all yeah. so very, 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 very much for yes. tuning in to today's edition of God and Everything. I'm going to ask that you guys continue to pray. Pray for our nation. Pray for our sitting president, yes. pray for the incoming president. Pray for um, every state that's represented here on God and everything. Pray for those states that are not represented here on God and everything. We want a peaceful yes. transfer of power and we don't want any more casualties because of foolishness, all right? Um, um, and continue to pray for next Wednesday. We'll be back on next Thursday with our commentary on the inauguration. If you ain't got no pearls, see me. I'm your pearl girl. And me. <laughs> and Pastor Gail, we got your pearls. We represent yes. our pearls for the first female and first black 
Madam VP. She's a Delta. They wear pearls, so we ready. We ready with it, okay? Yeah. Thank y'all. I'm gonna ask that you so. I'm putting the information in the bottom. I'm asking everybody on the live today to sow ten dollars to help keep God and everything on the air. It is in the comments section right now. That is what yes. I'm doing to help to keep God and everything on the air. I love y'all. I thank y'all. I appreciate y'all so very, very much. Pray for Pastor Gail and myself as we Please. pray for you. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Until next week.